3D printing has been my favorite hobby for quite a while now and it has slowly taken over my life. However, as soon as that cool, crisp breeze hits the air, I have another hobby that really takes over. A couple years ago around Christmas time, I was driving through random neighborhoods looking at Christmas lights and I came across one of those houses that the lights all blink and flash and go to music. It's a really cool show. And I thought to myself, I would love to do that one day. Completely forgot all about it until last year. It was about the middle of October and I decided I was gonna do it. I was gonna make my house go to music. It was gonna be awesome. Little did I know how much work this was actually gonna be and it turns out most people that do these shows start setting up in September. I didn't have this idea till the middle of October. I was very behind the ball with very little knowledge of what I was about to get into, but I did what I always do and I went straight to Facebook Marketplace. It just so happens that somebody near me was selling their entire show because they were upgrading it to pixels. I took this as a sign that it was meant to be and it was gonna happen, so I drove an hour away, picked it up, brought it home, and had no clue what I was doing. Thanks to Google, YouTube, and Facebook groups, I was somehow able to pull it off and I got my show running for my very first year. Ever since I put that stuff away after Christmas, I have been waiting for the day to come that I can go out to storage, bring all these things back inside, and get it set up again. This year, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of a Halloween show because I just couldn't wait to get this stuff out any longer. So I looked up Lightorama Halloween displays to see what everyone else was doing and I ordered some of the things that I would need to get this show going. Once my tombstones and singing pumpkin arrived, I got them out of the box, pushed all of those lights through their spots and I realized it came with stakes to set them up. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, however trying to be a good Arizonan and save water, I do not have grass in my front yard, I have turf. And where these tombstones are going to be set up, I just can't drive the stakes through the turf. So. I did what any sane person would do and I thought to myself, there's no way anybody else has ever had a problem like this. I'm the only person that's ever experienced this. I need to solve this problem myself. So without consulting Google or any of those very helpful Facebook groups, I decided I needed to grab my caliber, head to the computer and get to work. The first thing I wanted to figure out was how to attach anything to this tombstone. My first try at this was a slip on clip. My first iteration of this was too big to fit in between the lights. So I had to scrap that one, go back to the computer, change some parameters and send it back to the A1 mini. My second version of this clip slid on just how I wanted it to and it actually held on very well. I was pretty impressed. Next, I needed to design a stand that will keep this thing stood up. Originally, I didn't design it with a stand because I didn't know how many times it was going to take me to get the clip to work right and I didn't want to waste all that time printing out a stand when there was no point in having it yet. This is the design I settled on. It fits perfectly in the build volume of the Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer and I think it gives it some good support in all directions. Off to the P1S and I printed this out of PLA at first because I wanted to make sure that it would work before I wasted any of my valuable ABS. Now don't do what I did and print your prototype out of the same color as your final product. There's no way that's foreshadowing in any way, right? Once the PLA prototype was done printing out, I slipped it on the tombstone and it worked perfectly. Knowing that these are gonna be sitting outside and it's still about 110 degrees outside in Arizona, I needed to print these out of a material that was not gonna warp on me and actually keep its shape. I settled on ABS, one, because I already had it, and two, because it's worked for me in the past, leaving prints in the car, so I'm sure it'd be fine. If you don't have a printer that can print ABS or ASA or some of those more complex materials, there are some great resources out there such as PCBWay, which is the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay offers an amazing service where you can upload your 3D print files, pick from all sorts of different materials that most people cannot print out of, such as ABS, ASA, nylon, carbon fiber filaments, other abrasives, and they will ship that product out to you when it is done printing. They offer high quality prints. They even offer resin printing for some of those objects that regular 3D printers just can't create. And if it's something that 3D printing cannot do, such as CNC machine, they also offer that as well. You can get your acrylic all cut out to any size that you need. And if you need a PCB, guess what? They're the guys for that as well. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. This would not be possible without them. Go check them out in the description down below. All that's left to do now is print out 10 of these in ABS and slide them on all five tombstones. It only took 24 hours to realize that I mixed up my prototypes with my final product and PLA just does not like the heat. Good thing that's a simple fix. I slid on one of the ABS Stands and there was no more problems from there. Now that I had the tombstones all set up, it was time to get the rest of the show up and running and I came across another problem. This has been a very dry year for Arizona. We have got almost no rain this entire year and it really showed when I tried to drive these floodlight stakes into the ground. I don't know what's up with me and stakes this year, but we're just, we're not getting along. So 
Back to the computer. Now my requirements for this light stand are again pretty simple. I want it to be mostly 3D printed. I did plan to use threaded inserts, so that is the only thing that is gonna be not 3D printed on this build. My second requirement is that I need it to swivel in the base because I'm not exactly sure which way the light is gonna be facing, so I need that flexibility. The third requirement is that it's gonna be able to withstand the heat. These lights do get pretty hot, however, I think ABS should be just fine. And fourth requirement, obviously it's gotta hold the light up. Originally, I was gonna to try to design something for the stake to sit into, but I realized that that was gonna be way too cumbersome and honestly just not a good idea. Back to the drawing board, I took another good look at these lights and I realized that you can fully remove the stake. Just like the tombstones, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure I could attach something securely to the lights. I created this clamp design that uses threaded inserts as well as M3 bolts and it gets a good grip on there. After I knew I could attach something to the lights, I needed to design the neck portion of it that's gonna raise it off the ground and put it at the right angle. This ended up being super easy. I found out how to use the sweep command in CAD and it's gonna be one of my new favorite tools. This is probably the point where I should tell you that I have very little CAD experience, so I am honestly very happy with how this turned out considering my experience level. Now the next step was to print out one of these pieces with the neck on it and make sure that it was gonna be at the right angle. Printed one out, held it up, and it seemed to be pretty good. Now all I needed was a stand to hold these things up and why not use the stand from the tombstones? I've already made it, I know it works. I just need to scale it down a bit because these lights are not as big as the tombstones, so that's what I did. I scaled this down perfectly to fit on the A1 mini build plate because my P1S was busy on a long print and I just couldn't wait to get these things out. The first prototype was done and it was obvious there were a couple of changes that needed to be made. First problem I found was with the clamp. It was too tight in some areas, too loose in some other areas, and overall it it was just not thick enough. It didn't have that strength that I needed from it. So I went and I tinkered with the numbers, printed out another prototype, and the second one worked a lot better. It's still not perfect, but it's good enough for me. The next issue I found was with the neck itself. The way that I designed it to fit in the base, it was too loose and it allowed too much motion that I didn't want. One of my requirements for this print is that I needed it to still be able to swivel in the base because I didn't know which direction it was gonna be pointing in. All I had to do was just tighten up some of the tolerances, printed out again and we are golden. As these things go, it took very little time to find the next problem that I needed to solve and it actually came with the threaded inserts. This is the first time that I've tried to use threaded inserts and they are amazing. I love them, I can't wait to incorporate them in more projects. However, if your hand is not perfectly vertical when you press down on the insert, the insert is not gonna go in straight and it's gonna be almost impossible to thread in your bolt the way you want to. Now being the smart person that I am, I decided to look up a problem instead of deciding I need to solve this myself. And you wouldn't believe it, there are tons of threaded insert stations on Maker World. I found one that I thought was gonna be the best and printed it out. All these really do is make sure that your soldering iron is completely vertical and it just gives you a lot more stability in the whole process. Of course, this is gonna be linked in that description down below if you wanna go check it out for yourself. It was super easy to install. I decided on this one because it's almost completely 3D printed besides some bearings. The assembly is also super easy. You just have to snap those bearings in place, slip the clamp over your soldering iron of choice, and this is a really cheap one and it worked great. Now that I can ensure that my threaded inserts are gonna be inserted properly, I can put them all into place. All that's left was to disassemble and reassemble all of the lights that I would need for the Halloween show. Then I'm gonna go set them up outside where they need to go and give it a test run. Luckily, the test run went great. These lights are pointing in the exact spot that I need them to. They're a little bit elevated off the ground, providing great coverage across the house. This was a good solution for me, and honestly, I'm really proud of how it turned out considering I designed it all. Usually, I'm not this good. With everything set up for this very basic Halloween show, I was ready to get it started, and just in time, it is October 2nd. One day late, but you know what? It was worth the wait, and honestly, it's still too hot to feel like Halloween in Arizona, so I'm okay with that one day delay. It's super cool to see the way that my two hobbies have really just combined this year. I can't wait to see what problems I'm gonna have with the Christmas show and how I'm gonna be able to use 3D printing to solve it. If you wanna see that, then subscribe because I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of videos about solving all of those problems as well. 
If you see a way that I can improve on any of this stuff, let me know because I don't really know what I'm doing and some of you guys do, so I'd be happy to hear from you in the comments. And of course, if you did like this video, leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I know we're gonna get there eventually, but we need your help. But with all that being said, thank you for checking this video out. I appreciate you. I hope you have a good day or night and I'll see you on the next one.